Expo this morning is Mr. John LeMay. How are you doing this morning? Hey, Sean. It was, it was a nice surprise to see you here. You're a lot easier on the eyes than Mike, so this should be a nicer chat. Well, I thank think. you. I, I keep my ugly side on the backside. It's, oh. <laughs> that's where I store it. Uh, but um, I was, again, it was dropped in my lap because I thought I was talking Juneteenth this morning, so I was going to have you just give us a whole dissertation about what you know about Juneteenth, but I won't put you on the spot. Um, we're here to talk about, uh, well, first of all, your, your new book. This is this is awesome. We're going to talk about this uh, coming up here in just a minute. But um, uh, let's just let's just chat real quick about the uh, the book fair that's coming up with the Historical Society. Yeah, so on July 9th, we're mm-hmm. going to have another book fair slash book launch. Okay. Um, so we had another, we've had several donations over the past few months of historical titles. Um, so the the past book fairs have been really great for our archives because people have learned that they can they can give us books and that we will either sell them to, you know, kind of help with our operating costs. Mm-hmm. And if they're books that we don't already have, we'll put them in our library. So, okay. so each book fair, our library grows and gets bigger. And then we get to, you know, sell titles to people that are out of print that sure. they want. So it's a win-win for everybody. Sure. And again, so that's going to be July 9th from about 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Okay. And uh, so Donna Blake Richell will be with me. And what, what's happened with Donna, she has this really popular book called uh, Haunted Hotels and Ghostly Getaways. Sure. Yeah, New Mexico. And so Arcadia, the publisher, they hired a, a children's writer to take her book and adapt it for really young readers. Okay. So Donna did write it, but she didn't write it. You know what right. I mean? She ghost wrote it. She, oh, uh, good one. See, see good what one. you did there? Exactly. Very cool. Okay, so so it's kind of an adaptation of, of her work and her research that's, that's kind of being told and maybe a less spooky way for, yeah. for some, some uh, young minds. Yeah, and I was thinking about that. I was like, why didn't they just have her do it? But I was like, you know, children's books are so touchy. They probably have to have a degree, and, like, they have to know you can't use this word or that word or say sure. this or that. So they have to get, like, a quote-unquote professional to do okay. it. Although I'm sure Donna could have done it just as well. It's, but, a, it's a minefield you got to navigate yeah. these days. So, uh, but, but that's very cool. So, so Donna will be on hand with you uh, at the book fair. And uh, you mentioned it's a launch. So is this officially the launch of, of your new book? Yeah, it's the launch of my awesome. new book. It's my first novel. It's called The Noted Desperado, Pancho Dumez. A lot of people say Dumez, but you got to say it like Ricardo Montalban with a Z. Dumez. Dumez, Dumez yes. Yeah. The Noted Desperado, Pancho Dumez. Very, very cool. So, so this, is your, this is your first novel. Yeah, and it's in a way, it's my first book ever. Okay. I mean, it's only now getting published, but like, uh, so I did my first Arcadia book back in 2008 when I was 22, but I started writing that book three years before that when I was 19. You know, and I'm 36 now, so that's like almost half my life. I've been working on it off and on. Okay. It's it's one of those things where I would think I finished it. I'd have like a working draft, and then I'd put it away for a little while. I'd reread it, and I'd be like, no, nah, that's terrible. So then I'd redo it, and then. I mean, it's basically always been the same concept, but sure. just refined over many, many years. So Okay, so so tell us a little bit about the story. So the, the story, um, okay, for adult readers, what I would liken it to is if anybody's ever read Clive Custler's Dirk Pitt series. Okay. Where, uh, you know, he'll take uh, a historical event that was, you know, it's a real historical event, but then he'll weave a fictional na- narrative around it. Sure. Like uh, most people probably know, if anything, they know the movie Sahara with Matthew McConaughey. Right, right. With the, yeah, oh, I can't think of the other actor's name. Uh, but yeah, Steve Zahn. Steve yeah. Zahn, that's the one. Yeah, yep. So you know, he uh, Clive Cussler took the the real story of a missing Civil War battleship and how it disappeared, and he you know found a way to, for it to get all the way into the Sahara Desert in Africa and made a really interesting story out of something that might have happened. Well, in sure. my case, what intrigued me was the story of Billy the Kid's stolen tombstone. Okay. Yeah, and this is really what happened. Um, this isn't. This is the real historical facts. Right. So, in 1950, you know, everybody has heard about this guy, Brushy Bill Roberts. Mm-hmm. He pops up. He claims that he's Billy the Kid. He wants to have a a meeting with the current New Mexico governor to to get a, to get the pardon he felt he deserved way back in the 1870s. Right. And so on his tour of New Mexico, he goes through Fort Sumner and he looks at his grave where he says, you know, uh, well, you know, I'm not. I'm here, I'm alive, you know, that grave's got an imposter in it. But what's really interesting is uh, about a month later, that tombstone was stolen. And I should clarify for people, I'm not talking about the big giant headstone that has like the three names on it, because right. there's one for all three. This is a little footstone Okay. at the bottom. It's a lot smaller, because obviously, I mean, you can't imagine somebody lifting that that big headstone. Right. So, it's at yeah. least a team lift at best. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, we're talking about the little footstone. Okay. 
It's kind of got a uh, rectangular top. It's really cool. It's got 21 bullets on it. Really cool uh, little footstone. But it was stolen like right after his visit in 1950, within a month. And what really tops it off is it was found 26 years later, uh, so 1976 in Granbury, Texas. Hmm. And what's intriguing about Granbury is it's very near where Brushy Bill lived and died. Really? And not only that, uh, also living in Granbury was a guy who claimed he was Jesse James, named J. Frank Dalton. Mm -hmm. Also living there was a guy who claimed he was John Wilkes Booth after he was supposed to be so dead. So it was just a town full of imposters. It basically. was, yeah. So okay. it's, that's such a strange thing. And nobody knows what the connection is there. In real life, huh. it's in real life, it's just a coincidence. Right. But I thought, you know, that really has the makings of an interesting story. Absolutely. And uh, then the other thing, the other historical detail that intrigued me was... Uh, there's a Texas uh, folklorist named J. Frank Doby. who's not really, you know, he's from the 1940s and the 30s, so he's kind of fading into obscurity except for people that are really into history. Right. Uh, but I, you know, I really like his books, and he did a chapter one time on a different Billy the Kid imposter, hmm. and this one was way more interesting than Brushy Bill. Uh, this one's name was Walk Along Smith. Okay. And Walkalong Smith was a treasure hunter who had supposedly, right before he died, he supposedly found the location of uh, the Lost Adams diggings. Huh. And the Lost Adams, you know, is basically New Mexico's most famous treasure story. It's a uh, classic Western. Right. Took place 1860s. Uh, these miners all found a hidden canyon of gold. The Apaches came in, totally massacred all of them except for this one named Adams, mm -hmm. hence the name the Lost Adams. Um. But again, so this walk along Smith guy, allegedly he found the location of the lost Adams and then he dropped dead. Mm -hmm. And after he dropped dead, people said, well, he was also really Billy the Kid. He, he Billy the Kid faked his death with the help of Pat Garrett and uh, he went looking for the lost Adams diggings. And so that kind of fired my imagination too. So I was like, uh, I was like, let's conglomerate Brushy Bill and walk along Smith. Okay. Um, so I've, I've basically made up of uh, my own Billy the Kid imposter, kind of kind of an amalgamation of, yeah. of these two stories into into your own uh, imposter. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And that's that's something interesting too, because you know, in today's day and age, obviously it's you know nothing but a simple Google search. You're you're not you're not who you say yeah. you are, but <laughs> obviously in you know the old west, you couldn't just pop into you know even, even like a local library and look stuff mm -hmm. up. So I mean, tall tales like this, I mean, had to have permeated the the old west. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's even thought that Brushy Bill Roberts, instead of being Billy the Kid, was actually one of Billy the Kid's friends named Jesse Evans. Okay. And Jesse Evans knew nobody remembered his name, and he was like, you know, I could just pretend to be my friend the Kid and get all this attention and maybe make some money. That's a theory, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so I thought that was funny. You got to wonder, what, is, what does a Desperado do after they retire? Yeah. Do you, you, you start a book deal? I mean, do, uh, a book yeah, tour? Not, not back then. I think back then they were worried they would still get arrested and yeah, locked I would, up. And... I would think, you know, it's it's like uh, the, the story of Bonnie and Clyde, for example. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know you're going out in a blaze of glory. You're, there's there's no retirement after this. Yeah. I mean, you're, yeah. you're on an adventure, but you, this is the last one. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that, that begs the question, though, like, why did Brushy Bill come forward if he's worried about getting arrested? I mean, he said he wanted his pardon, mm -hmm. but I mean, really, if you're worried about it, you just stay hidden. Right. You know, so. Um, but yeah, I made up my own Billy the Kid imposter. I thought I, it's kind of a play on his name. I call him Tumbleweed Williams just because I thought it was kind of funny. But but yeah, so that's the backbone of the story. Very cool. Very cool. I always wondered, like, how, how someone gets gets the, the moniker of like a walk along. Yeah, I, I how, guess how he earn, walked everywhere. How do you earn walk along? I, I guess you know I'd be Mosey Smalls. Yeah, I, I <laughs> yeah. go I go places. I don't go anywhere fast. Yeah. So I'm just saunter, saunter Smalls. Yeah. Like that. So uh, okay, so this is going to be uh, launched uh, at the uh, at the book fair July 9th. Uh, it's going to be from 10 to noon, uh, and you'll be on hand. Uh, you can sign copies of the of the book and kind of yeah. give, give people an idea of what the uh, what the story is about. Yeah, so the book is set in 1976 when the tombstone is actually returned to Fort Sumner. Okay. And uh, the way I manipulated the story um, is that the tombstone is a clue in finding the lost Adam's diggings, and that's why they have to steal it. So, like, I have a scene where the main character has to steal the tombstone in the middle of Fort Sumner's tombstone race, which is a, a real thing. Fort Sumner, because the tombstone has been stolen so many times, mm -hmm. they have a literal tombstone race. Okay. And so, you know, my my thinking in plotting this book was kind of like, what would happen to Indiana Jones if he was in 
you know, New Mexico and Indiana Jones. I like their action scenes because they're kind of funny sure. and unique. So I thought, okay, he's got to steal the real tombstone during the tombstone race, which has all these duplicates, you know, floating mm -hmm. around. So like, that's a scene okay. in the book. And, uh, the Zozobra festival is in the book just because, you know, it's, it's a pretty cool, unique thing. You know, it's, it's, uh, where they burn that giant puppet in Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's kind of like all your, your bad luck. You, like you throw like bad documents in there to be burned. And like, so in the book, one of their clues to finding, you know, whatever is this document and it accidentally gets sent to get burned up in Zozobra. Mm -hmm. So they have to get it out before it does. So, okay. Stuff like that. It just got me thinking just, just like tons of like, you know, backwards executives just showing up at Zozobra, just like burning, you know, yeah, documentation. You, could. you certainly could. Yeah. There you, you go. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're, if you're, you know, trying to hide informa information, you know, from, from the tax man or something like that, just you know, come on up to Santa Fe. Yeah. Burn it off. Send it up yeah. to the gods. That's, that's, that's kind of a cool concept. So, so it feels like, uh, it sounds like, uh, the story itself is, is rooted in a lot in, uh, in New Mexico culture mm -hmm, and, yeah. and, in uh, uh, history here in uh, southeastern New Mexico specifically. And I guess that, that largely takes from your time here and, and you know, getting into the culture and the history. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the problem was when I was writing it, I'd just seen National Treasure where they have the, the right. map on the declaration. I was like, well, what, what do we have here that could be similar? And I think that's when the... The tombstone came in, sure. the lost atoms and all that. But but I like that that as you know, as as an author, you, you can borrow from from those you know different uh, areas that you've you've taken uh, inspiration from. Yeah. So, so that's a really cool concept. So uh, the noted desperado Pancho Dumez, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be premiering at the book fair uh, at the historical society there at the uh, at the archive building, correct? Next to that's the right, yeah. Historical society. Hey, and that's uh, from 10 to noon. It's right over there on uh, basically at the corner of 2nd and uh, Lee Street, a little back set on uh, on Lee. Uh, now, where can folks find the book uh, outside of the book fair? You can get it like right now today on Amazon.com. Okay. And if you can't remember the title, you know, you probably remember my name. You can just type my name in, look at my author page, and you'll find it. But uh, truthfully, if you really want the book, it would be better for me if you bought it right now on Amazon. Um, because it'll shoot my sales rank up and right. then more people, it'll get recommended to other people. It's pushed up to on the yeah. page. So I would actually prefer you buy it from Amazon, then bring it to me and I can sign it. But, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of people just show up at the book fair that won't know it exists. And sure. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it really does help me more if you just buy it on Amazon, really with any of my books, except for like the local history titles that you can get at the historical museum. Mm -hmm. Cause that also helps them. But sure. Yeah. But yeah, but if you want to help the author out specifically, buy uh, buy on Amazon and then bring your uh, bring your copy of the book to uh, to the book fair, and he'll be glad to sign it for yeah. you. And uh, you know, talk a little bit about the story. That's 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 a really cool uh, really cool idea that uh, you know that you're, you're taking from history and, and kind of making it your own story. Yeah. So this is this is basically your your life's work essentially. You, you, yeah. You put it's it's kind of like uh, the, the the first um, I'm trying to think the first Van Halen album how they kind of put everything into it. <laughs> So what's where's album number two? What do you got? Yeah. What do you got in the canon next? What's uh, what's coming from from the uh, from the John LeMay canon? Well, so you know, like I said, I started that book when I was nineteen. Sure. I'm thirty six now. I always had a lot of trouble with that first book, but I liked the characters, so mm -hmm. I would always come up with more ideas for them. Okay. And I've come up with so many ideas. Uh, uh, I think I'll do twenty one books because you know there's that association with Billy the Kid and the number twenty one. Sure. And it sounds like a lot, but actually, I think it's probably not enough. I just, I literally have so many ideas. Now, is is this a story that that number one needs or requires continuation, uh, mm -hmm. and also is it one that you want to continue as far as like the characters and kind of the the story, the the setting, the universe itself? Yeah, it's something that I want to continue, but it's not like the the Marvel stuff where they're. Sure kind of different and you have to you know read them to understand them i mean there's nothing you need to read before this one to understand right. it um it's like, like a poor row almost like e yeah. each each story is it's it's self-sustaining and yeah. it tells a story but knowing the back the characters and the backstory it kind of makes it a more rich experience yeah and like uh so i my idea is to do trilogies to do seven okay. trilogies you know which will make 21 total sure but what's going to make them unique is instead of going uh, forwards, they're going to go backwards. So, like, my second okay. book is set in 1950 when the tombstone actually gets stolen. Okay. And you'll learn everything the characters talked about in 1976 didn't really happen that way because that's how history is. We yeah. talk about it. And it's then, handed down and changed yeah. as, as it goes. The telephone game, basically. Yeah. Okay, so so it's almost like a prequel, but also kind of yeah. reestablishing the history of, of what happened. 
Yeah, and then Very like cool. the final book in that particular trilogy will be in 1881, and and you'll see like, did Billy the Kid really die? What right. happened when he found the Adams diggings? All that stuff. That's the actual like the culmination of the whole story. Yeah, of all these imposters kind of coming in, uh, in, into the fold. Yeah. Very, very cool. Awesome. So uh, the noted desperado Pancho Dumez. That's uh, that's going to be released uh, officially, world premiered at the uh, the book fair uh, at the Archive Building, July 9th from 10 to noon. Uh, is going to be there alongside uh, Donna Blake Birchall, showing off her uh, haunted uh, haunted sites of uh, New Mexico. So that's an, that's an awesome uh, opportunity. Uh, but again, if, if folks, if you're uh, you know cleaning out your closets, you just wrap up spring cleaning. You came across you know a few books that maybe just maybe the book or the uh, historical society's never seen before maybe it's something from your family's history bring it down and uh, you know put it in the uh, put it in the archives maybe put it up for sale and uh, it's a great chance to 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 meet John to meet Donna and uh, really kind of dive into to the history of southeastern new mexico it's a it's a rich tapestry yeah it's astonishing how how deep the history goes here in southeastern new mexico we're right in the back backyard of it you know yeah you go up to to you know up to capitan or up to up the hill to lincoln you dive into the, all the history of billy the kid stuff that I never even knew about. I moved to I moved to southeastern New Mexico a little later in life, so I wasn't like immersed in the history of Billy the Kid. People are always like, "Oh, you didn't go on the tour? You didn't go to the, the museum when you were in 4th grade? You didn't go up to Lincoln?" No, I didn't grow up here, so I didn't know any of that stuff. But I'm I'm playing catch up. And books like this and places like the Historical Society are a great chance for people like me to kind of play catch up and get mm-hmm. get caught up on the uh, on the history of things. So, yeah, and actually you gave me a good uh, opportunity to mention something else, which is uh I, I work with uh, C. Roswell every once in a while to okay. do little short historical videos. They're only, they're anywhere from like 10 to one minute long. Sure. And they just give a brief historical overview. I mean, they're they're supposed to be for tourists coming into town. Like you click a spot on the map and you get the history of the Chisholm statue okay. or the POW camp. But I mean, if you're local, you'll learn a minute's worth of history, mm-hmm. you know, as well. So like, I think, again, those are just on the C. Roswell app. Okay. So you just download the C. Roswell app, and then mm-hmm. those will be waiting for yeah. you. Very cool. Very cool. Well, you're a uh, historical mind and definitely one uh, that we want to tap into as much as possible. So, so keep up the great work. This oh, is, thank you. This is awesome. The noted desperado, Pancho Dumez. And uh, get that on Amazon right now. Matter of fact, go to wafbmuseum.org. Click the Amazon Smile link. Then go buy John LeMay's book. Not only are you helping out John LeMay, you're also helping out the Walker Av- Aviation Museum. Oh, cool. So we're... A little hand in hand there, cool. but yeah, get your book on uh, on Amazon. Bring it out to the book fair on July 9th, uh, ten to noon, uh, and John will be glad to sign it for you, personalize it, and uh, you know, tell you a little bit about uh, about his uh, his process. Yeah, the yeah, process. and the book too. Uh, just so everybody knows, it's for teenagers or adults. Okay. Yeah, because the main character is a teenager, but it's written at an adult level. So a little little saltier language, maybe not. No, no. I mean, for... I, so when I say adult, I think what I really mean is it's intelligent. It's not like dumbed down. Well, I'll you tell know, you this: yeah. I opened up just to one random <laughs> beginning of a chapter, and I'm gonna try to find it real quick. And it just said me and Dingus, and I'm like, okay, now I, now I need to know. I'm try to find which which yeah. chapter I opened up on. But uh, yeah, Dingus is his cousin. So, okay. Yeah. okay. Well, Dingus is just was my nickname in high school. That's, oh, okay, cool. Here it yeah. is. Uh, two and a half, uh, two hours and a few mistakes later, there me and Dingus were barreling down the hallways of Pat Garrett High with baby Billy, with the baby Billy Goat. Things had gone mostly to plan, except for it took longer to get to Pat Garrett than we planned. It goes on from there, yeah. folks. If you want the story, right here it is: the noted desperado Pancho Dumez. Get your copy on Amazon. Bring it out to the book fair. John will sign it, personalize it for you, and uh, it's just an awesome chance to get to know a local author. Yeah, thank John, you. Thank you yeah. so much for your time. We appreciate yeah, thank having you. you. Enjoyed and it. Keep it up, man. Twenty one. a that's a that's a a high a high uh, bar to set. But yeah. if anybody can do it, I think you got it. In. I've already written thirty six, so twenty one more there shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, and I'm also thoroughly depressed at the fact that you've you you're a a uh, well written author. You have so many different books under your under your uh, your belt. And in this interview, I learned that you're a year younger than me. So I'm going to go over <laughs> to the other room and cry for a minute. <laughs> that's depressing. What have I done with my life? <laughs> John, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, John. We appreciate having you here and keep up the good work. Thanks.